into the 50s later on this afternoon. Clouds will be moving in and a high rain chance for tomorrow. Full details on your weather forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Pause by 2 begins right now. Right now, Lafayette firefighters responded to a house fire. Plus, Saturday marked one year since three siblings were killed by a drunk driver. And the daily dangers of decorating for the holidays, we have some potentially life-saving advice for you, Acadiana. Live from Acadiana, your local news leader, this is Pass Pa 2. Good Sunday morning. We thank you for joining us. Last night, Lafayette firefighters responded to a house fire on South Pier Street. News 10's Dotson D'Amico was there as they fought to put out that fire. He says when he arrived, the flames were already being doused. I had no idea that that was going on. I walked out the house and house across the street from my house on flames, like flames, flames. According to the Lafayette Fire Department, the fire started just after 5 o'clock. Flames and smoke covered the sky as neighborhood residents realized what was happening. Frank Broussard lives down the street from the house that caught fire. When he saw what was happening, he says his initial instinct was to make sure everyone in the house was safe from the fire. First thing I tried to do was make sure that they was at the house. And then when I seen them three standing up right there, then I was fine. He says he has known the people who lived at the house for years. Broussard hopes they can get back on their feet as soon as they can. I've been knowing these people for over 20 years, so I really understand the situation they're going through. And in due time, I guess they'll be all right. You know, they'll figure out a way. That was Dawson D'Amico reporting there. The Lafayette Fire Department says no injuries have been reported. The cause for the fire is unknown at this time. Yesterday marked one year since three Iberia Parish siblings were killed by a drunk driver. 15-year-old Cameron, 17-year-old Christopher, and 20-year-old Lindy Simmons lost their lives when their vehicle was hit head on. Saturday, the family held their first ever Chris Simmons Memorial Tournament to honor their lives. Chris's basketball team played in the fundraiser tournament in his honor. There was also a Kendra Scott pop-up shop for Lindy, who loved fashion. There was even a blood drive in Cameron's honor. As her family says, she had a giving heart. Our lives have changed in the worst ways would be an understatement. I mean, there's not one area of my life that's untouched, and that goes for the rest of my family. And um, the only thing that makes us feel better is doing good for others. So that's our way of keeping their memory alive and keeping their legacy alive. And that is how we get by day to day is to try and do positive things in the community to honor them. It's what we think they would want us to do. Yeah, the family hopes to make the memorial tournament an annual event. An LSU senior who was murdered three months ago was awarded an honorary degree yesterday. Police say Allie Rice was sitting in her car waiting for a train to pass in Baton Rouge when she was gunned down and killed. She was just months away from graduating. Her parents were at Saturday's ceremony. It is with heavy hearts that we present a posthumous degree for Allison Nicole Rice. It was supposed to be Allie Rice walking across the stage. Allison's mother, Angela Simpson Engler, and her father, Paul Rice, are here to accept her diploma at this time. Allie was just months away from receiving her degree in marketing from LSU. It would be hard to express how proud I am of her and, and how hard she worked and the effort that she put in. She, she was just phenomenal. Exactly three months ago, Allie was waiting in her car for a train to pass on Government Street. That's when police say Allie was killed by gunfire. Obviously, this moment doesn't bring her back, but we at least had an opportunity uh, to pay tribute to her. Paul says it never gets easier, but receiving her degree gave him a sense of joy. This was a nice change. It was a great opportunity to focus on the positive and less on the negative today. Ellie's father says as far as her case is concerned, there are no new updates from law enforcement. Her murder is still unsolved. Let's head to Texas where police in Dallas are searching for a suspect who shot five teenagers at 7-Eleven Friday night. 
The victims' ages are 12, 13, 14, 16, and 17. Police say an unknown suspect shot at the victims and fled that scene. All five teenagers who were shot were taken to hospitals for non-life-threatening injuries. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says there are nearly 200 Christmas-related injuries every day during the holiday season, and sometimes accidents can become deadly. Wendy Gillette explains it all. The holidays turned tragic in a neighborhood outside of Philadelphia last year. Early Christmas morning, crews battled a two-story house fire. A mother and one son escaped, but the father and two children who were trapped inside died. Investigators believe a faulty electric star on top of a dry Christmas tree sparked the fire. This demonstration from the Consumer Product Safety Commission shows just how dangerous a dry tree can be. The tree on the left has been watered regularly. 30 seconds after being lit, it smolders out. The tree on the right is dry. The flames spread quickly. And in a matter of seconds, the room is engulfed in flames. So around Christmas, we see a lot of uh, hazards associated with decorating. Alex Hohen Sarek is the chair of the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission and says candles also pose a danger. In this demonstration, a misplaced candle on a menorah ignites the curtains. And every year, thousands of people get hurt putting up decorations. What are the most common injuries you see at Christmas time? We do see a lot of falls associated with um, ladders and people using them to put up decorations. Decorations need to be double checked for defects. Lights shouldn't have any frayed wires or loose sockets. Making sure they don't can prevent a tragedy this holiday season. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, New York. And speaking of safety, before you head outside, you want to make sure you know where the weather is going to be because it's going to be chilly and you want to be able to dress appropriately for it. Yeah, a cold week ahead yeah. and definitely a cold morning. Let's take a look at our Sky 10 camera. Nice sunrise for this morning. This is looking down Ambassador. A cold morning. Temperatures in the lower 30s across the region. Let's take a look at some of these temperatures sitting at around 32 degrees, right around that freezing mark in Lafayette, 35 in New Iberia, 30 degrees in Baton Rouge. Now, clouds will be moving in later on today. We could see a period of most sunny skies, but I do think the clouds will be coming in later on associated with this southwesterly flow. And here's our next disturbance. This will be moving across the desert southwest, already producing rain and snow there. This will be coming in for tomorrow, giving us a high rain chance. But for now, so far, so good. So temperatures rising through the 40s, getting into the low to mid 50s for this afternoon. Future track shows these clouds moving into the area. Overcast for tonight as our storm system approaches for tomorrow. Very little sun, if any at all. A light to moderate rainfall through the day with some heavier pockets. And we could see a northeasterly breeze as well. So it will be one of those days where it's just cold and nasty through the day. In terms of rainfall totals, not expecting anything too serious, but we could have Add an additional three fourths of an inch to an inch of rainfall in this year's bucket before uh, all is said and done here through the next uh, week or two. So, temperatures in the 30s for this morning. We warm up into the low to mid 50s for this afternoon. Chilly again tonight, but not as cold as what we're seeing now. For tomorrow, though, temperatures barely reaching 50 degrees. When you have rainfall through the day, you have cloud cover, you don't have a lot of sunshine. That's just not a good recipe for temperatures to warm up. So we're lucky if we hit 50 degrees for tomorrow. And then we have these northeasterly winds through today and for tomorrow, which could even intensify a bit. So we'll have a little bit of a wind chill out there for tomorrow. Upper level pattern. So we have our system. This will be coming in for tomorrow. Tuesday, some of that rain lingers. Wednesday looks good. Here's our next system, our Arctic front. This will be coming in Thursday. Really not expecting a lot in the way of rainfall with this system. Maybe even some snow across the northern portions of the state once that cold front moves through because that temperature drop will be so dramatic behind it. Uh, here's an example of that. 62 in Lafayette Thursday afternoon, 17 in Dallas. So a very sharp temperature drop there. This cold air will be coming in very quickly. We'll be in the teens likely Friday 
Friday morning, somewhere between, let's say, 16 and 18 degrees potentially. And it looks like temperatures may not even get above freezing for Friday, and that could continue through Saturday. We may barely get above freezing Saturday. 53 year high today, partly sunny and cool. A northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Seven day forecast has high rain chances for your Monday and Tuesday. Arctic front comes in Thursday, and that brings very cold temperatures in for Friday and Saturday. 30 degrees Friday for a high. And that's